Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I'm bringing you today's word for October 15th, 2021. All year long, I've been teaching you about leveling up. I've, I've declared that this is a year of new levels for us. Matter of fact, I even wrote a book on leveling up, right? So I talked about this is being a year of new levels where you can level up in every fa area, every aspect, every facet of your life. And so one of the things that gives us the assurance that we will level up is God's, God's faithfulness. So I've been teaching on God's faithfulness. And then within this series on, on God being faithful, there's a series within the series called You Can Withstand and Overcome Anything. And that's where I've been flowing. I've been teaching you about the power of your words. And, and I believe that I, now on Monday, I'm going to be released to go teach something else. I mean, we'll continue on in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, but I got stuck in verse 13. I think that on Monday, I'll be released to go to verse 16. But look, I, I never know. Like I just get up in the morning, whatever God wants me to share is what I share. But for right now, on this Friday morning, as we seek to close out the week strong, I want you to know that God is faithful, that God is committed to you, that he loves you, that, he, that you have not done anything to disqualify yourself. As a matter of fact, you can't disqualify from something you never qualified for in the first place. Jesus qualified you. So open up your heart to God's best. God is faithful. All right, so that said, I can get into the word for this morning. So I'm teaching a series inside of the series called We Can Withstand and Overcome Anything. This is part 24. And the title of today's message is God is watching over his word to perform it. I want you to know that God himself is watching over his word to perform it in our lives. You know what? I was actually, um, yesterday, I thought I was done with teaching from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 that I was going to move on from the words, the power of words. And I was like, Lord, I don't want to like finish, you know, uh, I don't want to start a new topic on a Friday. Uh, do you want me to keep teaching about words or not? And I wasn't sure. And I went to sleep. And this morning when I got up, the Lord led me to two things, Romans 10 and Isaiah, I mean, uh, Jeremiah 1. And so I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, because that's where we've been. And then we're going to look at Romans 10. Then we're going to look at Jeremiah 1, and then we'll get into it. You ready? All right, so here we go. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, Now, it's because of God's mercy that we have been entrusted with the privilege of this new covenant ministry. And so because of that, we will not quit. We will not faint with weariness. Now, we are like common clay jars, verse 7, that carry around this glorious treasure on the inside. We're carrying around this glorious treasure on the inside, but that is so that the immeasurable power that is seen through our lives could be seen as God's and not ours, so that everybody, so God would get the glory. It's all about him. It's not about us. Verse eight, though we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed though. And some, sometimes, honestly, we don't even know what to do, but we know this, quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down. That's the truth, but we're not going to be knocked out. The only way we can lose is if we quit, right? If it doesn't look like I'm winning, then obviously the battle is not over, right? Verse nine, we are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. Uh, uh, we continually share in the death of Jesus in our own bodies so that the resurrection life of Jesus can be revealed through our own bodies. Now we consider living to mean that we are being constantly handed over to death, uh, for Jesus' sake, but this is so that the life of Jesus can be revealed through our humanity. So then death is at work in us, but you know what? It is releasing life in you. Now, here we go. Verse 13. Now we have the same spirit of faith that was described in the scriptures when it says, first, I believe, then I spoke in faith. And Paul was like, well, guess what? Well, we also believe then we speak in faith. And then verse 16. So no wonder we don't give up. And this is what I'm probably, if God releases me, I'll go to verse 16 on Monday. So no wonder we don't give up. For even though our outward man is gradually wearing out, our inner man is being renewed day by day. Now we view our short, slight troubles, like slight short-lived troubles. Now we're all going to deal with trouble and tribulation and challenges in this world. But but how you, how you see it uh, does have a, a tremendous impact on how you deal with it. And so our perspective is, I'm looking at these things through the lens of faith. I'm looking at these things through the perspective of heaven. So I see these slight short-lived troubles within the light of eternity. I see difficulties as actually a substance that is producing for me an eternal weight of glory. Why? Verse 18, because I'm not focused on the scene. 
I'm focused on the unseen. There's a whole nother realm that's operating at the same time. There's a seen realm that I can communicate with through my five physical senses, but there's an unseen realm that I communicate with through the Holy Spirit. And so the, the unseen is more real to me than the seen. The, the seen is temporary. The unseen is eternal. Okay. I told you I was going to add Romans 10 and then Jeremiah 1. So Romans 10 verses 9 and 10, very you know, familiar scripture to a lot of believers. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, the man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm a teacher on that. Jeremiah 1 and 12, the Bible says, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active watching over my word to perform it. Oh my God. I can't wait to get to that part. God says, you know what I do every day? All day, I am alert, I am active, and I am watching over my word to perform it in your life, in the earth. Hallelujah. So what does this mean for you today? I have two things. I'm just going to break up. I have a lot to share with you, but I'm going to break it up into the two points with the two scriptures, right? So the first one, number one, this is where I need you to rid your heart and mind of all distractions. Number one, the supernatural is manifested when you set your faith in agreement with God by saying what he has said or what he is saying to you. The supernatural is manifested in the earth when you set your faith in agreement with God by saying what he's already said or by saying what he is saying to you. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Let me read it for you again. So remember, this is the word. This is how we get saved. This is the, the scripture that most people use. This is what I use when I got saved. If, I, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you believe, like you're confessing with your mouth and then you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you're going to be saved. So it's with the heart that you believe and it's with the mouth that you confess. Right. So as we use this passage for salvation and we use it all the time, the Holy Spirit teaches us something here about it. And so the Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, says that when we use our mouths to make a, a declaration of faith or confession, that that we are saying with our mouths that Jesus is Lord. And we're not just saying it, but we believe it in our heart then we're born again. We get to, we're translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. We get born again. We're saved. We're, tr we're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We do it. How did we do it? We confess with our mouth. We believed it in our heart. Now the word confess in verse nine and the word confession in verse 10 is the same word. It's a Greek, it's a Greek word and the word is homologio. Homologio is a compound word. Homologio. Homo means the same. Logio is logos or the written word of God. So homologio means I am saying the same thing as the word of God. I am saying the same thing as the word of God. Paul was saying the Holy Spirit through Paul. If you say the same thing as the word of God, that Jesus is Lord. If you say the same thing as the word of God, that Jesus is Lord and you believe it in your heart, guess what? You will be saved for with your heart. You're believing what God is saying. And then with your mouth, you're speaking it and you're speaking words of faith from a believing heart and you're speaking words that align with God and you're setting your faith in agreement with God. Guess what? You're going to have what you say. You get to be born again. You Once you confess Jesus as Lord, what, what the text is saying, you're basically saying the same thing as the word of God as it relates to Jesus. So when you say the same thing as the word of God as it relates to Jesus and you believe it in your heart, you get to be born again. You're delivered from the kingdom of darkness, translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Now, why am I taking my time with this? Because you got to understand what I'm saying. You are saved. Look at me. If you're born again, you were saved. You were born again by speaking words of faith from a believing heart. You were saved by speaking what God was speaking and saying it from a believing heart. And when you did that, it changed your eternal destination. So here's my question for you. If speaking words of faith from a believing heart, if saying what God has already said or saying what God is saying and believing when I say it, if that saved me from hell, then doesn't it stand to reason that it will save you from other stuff as well? Absolutely. If speaking words of faith from a believing heart kept me from going to hell, then guess what? Then speaking words of faith from a believing heart can keep peace in my marriage. 
It can keep warmth in my home. It can keep obedience in my children. It can keep health in my body. It could keep su success in my career, my business. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I'm, I'm going to say the same thing. I'm a homologio. I'm going to say the same thing as the word of God. That's what I'm, I'm going to speak the word only. These are not empty words. These are not words. These are not my words. These are not selfish words. These are not things that I came up with. These are not empty words that I don't believe. No, I'm speaking what God is speaking. I'm speaking what God is declaring. And when I speak what God has declared and I do it from a believing heart, guess what? I'm going to have what I say. This thing, this is how I got born again. This is how I canceled my reservations to hell. This is how I got a confirmation number to go to heaven. And so, so now that I know that I'm going to heaven, I'm born again. I'm not going to hell. How did I do it? By confessing the word of God and doing it from a believing heart. Homologio. So watch this. If confessing and believing is what saved your life from hell, then doggone it, confessing and believing can keep hell out of your life. And so, so, so you got to speak the word only. You, you, you can speak the word over your faith, your family, your children, your marriage, your career, everything. Speak, speak what God is speaking. Speak what God has already said, and then speak what God is saying, and then speak it from a believing heart. You're setting your faith in agreement with God. Guess what? You're releasing the power of God. All right. Number two, I only have two things for you this morning. Number two, what do you think God does all day? That, that's an interesting question. Like, what do you think God does all day? Well, the text says that he's alert, he is active, he's watching over his word to perform it. So one of the things that God does all day is watch over his word to perform it. In Jeremiah chapter one, I only shared with you one verse, Jeremiah one and 12, but you should probably know the story of Jeremiah. Jeremiah one, the Lord reveals to Jeremiah that God says to Jeremiah, listen, Jeremiah, before I formed you in your mother's belly, I already knew you, I already had a, you know, a relationship with you, I already made plans for you. Matter of fact, I already ordained you. Like I, I had an ordination ceremony in heaven before I sent you to this planet. And I had this ordination ceremony. And what I did was I ordained you to be a prophet. So there was an ordination ceremony before you were even born. And I decided I before ended you, I predestined you. Destined, destination, pre, before. I before ended you. I, I established you, the end from the beginning and I already established the fact that you're supposed to be a prophet. And as a matter of fact, I've already established everything that you would ever need for your divine assignment. I've already given you the grace to do it. And so then I sent you to this planet for such a time as this. I ordained you to be a prophet. And guess what? If that's true for Jeremiah, then it's also true for me. And so God assured Jeremiah because uh, the first thing that Jeremiah said when God told him that was Jeremiah was like, whoa, hey, hey, hold on. I'm too young. Uh, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, I can't do it. And that's how we do God all the time. God says, hey, do this. And you give God all these excuses. God says, put in the resume. You try, try to tell God why you're not qualified. God says, start the business. And you try to tell God why you, you well, hold on for a minute. Look at all the reasons why I can't do it. Stop. Just so God was like, no, Jeremiah, don't speak against the assignment. Listen, I'm going to be with you everywhere that you go. You're going to say what I tell you to say. As a matter of fact, because you're a prophet and prophets are supposed to speak my word, then guess what? I'm going to put my words in your mouth. The, uh, I, the Bible says that he reached down and put his, took his hand and put his, put his hand in Jeremiah's mouth like a coal, the Bible says. And then God was like, look, I have put my words in, in your mouth and now you can speak those words. And watch this, Jeremiah. Watch this, Jeremiah. I am alert. I am active. And I will watch over my word to perform it. When you speak the word, you don't have to worry about it coming to pass. It's not, that's not your job. My job is to bring it to pass. Your job is to say it. Come on now. Your job is to say it, not to figure out how. Your job is to say it out loud, not to figure out how I'm going to do it. Let me worry about how I'm going to do it. You speak it. I am alert. I am active. And I'm watching over my word to perform it. My God. So here's some things that we can glean from Jeremiah. First thing is, A, we all have a divine assignment. Jeremiah's assignment was to be a prophet. A prophet has to speak words. And so God gave him a vision. And so you, your, pro, your thing may not be, oh, I'm a prophet. Okay. Whatever it is that you're called to do, maybe you are a brick mason, you're a lawyer, a doctor, a, you're in business, you're a nurse. I don't know. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, then you have a divine, you're called to preach. I don't know. So whatever it is that God has called you to do, you, you, you get vision from the Holy Ghost and the clearer the vision, the stronger the pull that you're going to feel, the, the clearer the vision, the stronger the pull that you're going to have towards your destiny. 
destiny. Your de Listen, every day when you get up, I'm telling you that your calling is calling you. Every day when you get up, when my feet hit the ground, nobody has to motivate me. I'm self-motivated. Why? Because my calling is calling me. When you know your calling and you have a clear vision about your calling and you're not confused about it, you know that your calling is calling you. So every day you will get up. Listen, and let me tell you something about the word of God, your assignment B, part of your assignment is to speak the word of God. Now you may be saying, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not called to preach. I'm not called to do this. Listen, you may not be called to preach, but you still got to say what God is saying to you. Everybody has a responsibility to say what God is saying to them. It could be like with your friends. It could be with your girlfriends, with your homeboys. It could be whatever. You could be at a football game and God gives you a word. You, you have a responsibility to say what God is saying. God, you could be in Walmart. I remember one time I was in Walmart and God said to me, I was in Evans, Georgia at the Walmart in Evans, Georgia. And God said to me, go over to that lady and tell her, this was a long time ago. This is like 2004, 2005. God said, go over to that lady and tell her that I love her. And I was like, God, I don't roll like that. I'm from Brooklyn. I don't be talking to people like that. I don't know that lady. You must be crazy. I ain't doing all that. And God was like, no, I need you to go over there and talk to her. I was like, I ain't doing all that. And while I was saying no to God, somebody else walked up to the lady and said, excuse me, ma'am, I don't normally do this. I don't even know what I'm doing, but God wants me to tell you that he loves you. And then she was right there in the women's section, you know, like, you know, that, that round thing where all the clothes are hanging up. She held on to that thing and she was crying in Walmart. And I felt like this big. I felt this dumb because God said, listen, now that dude right there is getting your blessing. I had a blessing with your name on it. I had to give it to him because you were disobedient. I don't care what you're called to do. God will tell you to say something and you got to say what he is saying. And part of your assignment is to share God's word in this world. Say amen to that. Another thing we can glean is that God is always with you. God told Jeremiah, listen, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be with you everywhere that you go. When you know that God is on you and in you and with you and for you, then yes, is God going to call you to do things that you feel unqualified for? Absolutely. Is God going to call you to walk into rooms that you've never been in, walk into rooms where nobody looks like you, sounds like you, but you got to go into that room knowing that God is with you, that God will give you the words, that God will perform the work, that his indwelling presence is on you. And so his presence brings with it power and protection and peace. Here's another point. It's God's word, but it's your mouth. And so when I'm preaching the word, guess what? What does God sound like? Well, it depends on who's talking. If, I, if I'm on a, a plane that's American Airlines and, and, and the, the flight attendant is speaking, then what does American Airlines sound like? Well, right now it sounds like her right? If the pilot is speaking, he's a male one. Well, right now it sounds like him. Well, guess what? When people say, what does God sound like? Well, right now he sounds like me. Right now he sounds like a Dominican kid from Brooklyn. Why? Because it's God's word, but it's your mouth. God said to Jeremiah, no, I'm going to put my word in your mouth. I need you to speak it. I have the word, but you have the mouth. I have the word, but you have the voice. And so I need to use your voice. God will use your, your personality. No, I don't care where you're from. God will use your personality. You have an accent. Okay. God will use an accent. Be okay with your accent. Matter of fact, from your accent. Be you. Be comfortable being you. It's God's word, but it's your mouth. It's God's word, but it's your heart. God will use you. You got it. It is truth through personality. God will use you. Don't 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 minimize. Don't devalue who it is that you are. You are unique. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And then the last point is the point I was trying to get to. God is responsible for providing the power behind the word. Not you. God is responsible. God is saying, listen, I will never allow, not one word, not one word will ever return back to me void. Not one, if God said it, if God said it in his word, or if God is saying it to you right now, and you say what God has said, God has said, listen, I will not allow not one word to return to me void. Or your job is to speak the language of faith. Your job is to say what God is saying. Your job is to keep God in your conversation. Your, when people listen to you, they should hear faith. When people talk to you for five minutes, they should hear somebody that believes God. And then you say what God is saying, and then God will handle the rest. That's not your job. God has, has promised to watch over his word to perform. The Bible says that he is alert. He's active. That's what he does all day. He's watching over his word to perform it. Now, let me say this to be clear. God is not obligated to perform your word. God is not obligated to perform my word. God, God has obligated himself to perform his word. So, so, so when I speak words, if I came up with it in my own heart, then God is not obligated to back up what I said. But when I say what he's saying, when I'm saying what he is leading me to say, then my word is actually his word and God will watch over his word to perform it. When we open up our mouths and we say what God is saying to us, what God is saying to us in the moment is God's word and God will ensure that, that it will come to pass. 
Now, once again, you don't need to know how. You don't need to know when. All you need to do is speak the word only and let God do the rest. In Psalms 103 and 20, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Listen, the text says, angels do his word, angels heed the voice of his word. So angels are the ones, they're angels that move on your behalf. Angels perform the word of God. Angels heed to the voice of the word. So when you open up your mouth, you give the word voice. When you open up your mouth, you are giving the word of God a voice in this world. So at that moment, God sounds like you because you are giving the word a voice and angels move. Angels will move. There are angels that are waiting on you to open up your mouth and say something. One of the things that God does all day is watch over his word to perform it. One of the things that angels do all day is watch over God's word to perform it. And so when you understand this, this is why I keep teaching. I think this is so important, the power of your words. If you get a better understanding, a revelation of this, then I hope it, that you, you will realize how important your words are. You can't just be saying stuff. Oh, well, I didn't really mean that. Then why did you say it? Angels are listening. God is listening. You give the word voice when you open up your mouth and you speak the word over your every aspect of your life. You got it? This is how we withstand and overcome anything. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and say this. Say, Father, this is a season of leveling up for me. I level up by speaking the language of faith daily. I speak faith over my divine assignment. I declare that I will complete it before I die. Now, part of my assignment is to speak the language of faith, to speak your word on this planet. I do that every day. I share your word out of my mouth. I speak your word through my voice and you will ensure that it comes to pass. As a matter of fact, angels move when I give your word a voice in this world. You are alert, Father. You are active. You are watching over your word to perform it. So I loose your word over this day. I declare no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I declare you establish a table of blessing for me right in the middle of all of my enemies. I declare that I overcome because you already overcame. And I speak greater is coming for me. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's words. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, you want my notes, go to todaysword.org and sign up and get the messages. They're going to be a blessing to you. Listen, I don't want you to, to leave yet. Um, I just pulled something up. I want to share with you, share something with you real quick. I know it's a Friday morning. On Friday mornings, I like to talk about our ministry. I, li I like to talk about what's going on uh, in the Dominican Republic. So let me just pull up something real quick. Don't, don't hang up. Uh, if you got a quick minute, just, just hold on for a second. I want to show you some pictures. Let me share my screen. All right, let me see what I got here. All right. All right, so let me share my screen real quick. Let me show you some pictures. So we just got new desk in the Dominican Republic. Man, I'm so excited about this. I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to be in the Dominican Republic next week. So we got all these desks. With, uh, this is the first floor is done. We're going to finish up the second floor. Um, we got new equipment. We got new desks. Let me show you. All right. Yeah. We got these nice, uh, desks for the smaller kids. Um, our school is coming together. Thank you so much. We're only making this happen with, uh, our partners and our supporters. So we thank God for you. And let me show you some pictures of the kids. Let me go back this way. Hold on. Uh, let me see if I can get to the kids real quick. But listen, uh, thank you so much for uh, sewing into our ministry, for partnering with us. I thank God for you. I appreciate you. Here we go. Um, I do want you to see a couple of pictures of the kids, and then I'll have more pictures when I go next week. Um, but I tell you what, 
Um, we thank God for you. We appreciate you. We, we love you guys. Uh, when you partner with us, you get to partake of uh, what we're partaking in, and you are uh, a partaker of the grace that's on our ministry. And so thank you so much for your partnership, for your support. Uh, all the donations, if you want to make a donation, go to ripministries.org. All the donations that you make uh, in the United States are tax deductible. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. So listen, thank you so much for partnering with us. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak the word over you. Man, speak the word only. This stuff is for real, right? I love you. God loves you more. Have an amazing weekend. And uh, I'll see you on Monday morning. God bless you.